What is up, Coronacation? What's up? It's Friday. It's day 104. Sam, have you recovered from... Mm, I'm still... I feel like I still beans. like burp and taste it sometimes, but it's we're here now. I made it. I'm alive. Well, okay. So, I'm glad. I'm glad that you're alive and well. <laughs> um, I found out that, to, that today, that really this week, so every day that we've been doing this, it's supposedly forgiveness week. I didn't even know that was a thing. I mean, you know, know, as Jesus followers, we forgive every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's supposed to be the way we live. So like, I don't know, forgiveness life, but not just week. But anyway, um, ah, never mind. I'm not asking for forgiveness about those <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, I no, forgive you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. But you know, we, we've been talking about faith and that, you know, faith is being sure of what we hope for. It's being sure of what we do not see. I'm, I've got it. Okay. Really? I've got okay. it. In my you can do. You can do the. I, I, I can do that. Yeah. The glasses. But you know, we t- we've talked about you know all the things that we can't see and like that. That just because we can't see it doesn't mean that it's not true. Especially when it comes to our faith and in the Bible. You know, we we can't see Jesus anymore, but we can live by the example that he gave us, right? And being that it's forgiveness week, like that's a that's a big topic in in the Bible. Um, and so I thought we could talk about forgiveness because if we're gonna live out our faith, then we kinda have to forgive people. I mean like Jesus says that we are to forgive others the way that he has forgiven us. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious What's something that you've had to forgive somebody over, or that you've had to ask forgiveness? You get you got anything? I know well, I put you on the spot. Here. I mean, I have a lot of siblings. Oh, you do. So there was a lot of that going on. I remember one particular time. I believe I had aggravated my little brother, so I may have had to ask forgiveness for that. But we had a little putt putt golf set with these plastic uh, putt putt golf clubs, you know, mm-hmm. and. And he comes after me, and so I run away from him. I think I get away around the corner, and he's sitting there, and he rails me right in the head with this thing. If you look close, there's actually like a little bit of a scar on my forehead. Oh, gosh, dude. Yeah. So. So it's, I laugh at that, but it wasn't funny then. It wasn't funny no, when, when I got hurt. hit with the purple golf club. But I had to, ask, you know, forgive him. He had to ask for forgiveness, and I mean, it, it was hard because I did get hit in the head with the golf club, but I mean, that's one of my forgiveness stories. How about you? Yeah, so. You know, one thing, before I get into my story real quick, one thing that that I've been guilty of before is like, somebody will say, oh, like you'd say, Andrew, I f- will you forgive me for, you know, spilling those beanie weenies? And I'm like, yeah, man, it's okay. When really, it's not okay. I mean, it's not, that. that's a silly instance, but like that, mm-hmm. your brother hitting you in the head, like that's not okay. And that's why we ask for forgiveness, because if it is okay, then why ask for forgiveness? Okay, that was just a little insert there. Mm -hmm. So when I was a kid, I broke this arm. Y'all have heard a few stories of me breaking bones, but I broke this arm right here. You know, I spent weeks and weeks in a cast. Well, then I get out of the cast, and I'm like able to play for the first time in a long time on the playground. No cast, no, nothing in the way. Well, then, I don't remember me and a buddy where we, something, we had some kind of disagreement. And I'm, I'm only like eight years old, so it was probably over like, you know, something stupid, like what color the slide was, or something like that. Anyway, we, we disagreed, and he got mad, and like took my freshly healed arm that was still really weak, and slung, like grabbed on like this and just slung me, <laughs> spun me around, slung me down. Luckily it didn't break, but it hurt so bad because I mean, you know, all the, my arm was still really weak. Mm-hmm. And so he had to ask for forgiveness or he asked me for forgiveness. It I, honestly, guys, it took me a few days to get to that point where I was like, you know, bud, I, I forgive you. It wasn't okay, but we moved on. Still friends today, so yeah. I mean, I think that's really important because sometimes people do really big things and it's hard to forgive them and it might take some time. So 
You don't have to say I forgive you if you don't mean it, but take some time and, and you can work on it. And eventually, like Andrew did, you can get to that. Yep. And the other side of forgiveness is it, it's very hard for us. Pride gets in the way mm -hmm. for us to ask for forgiveness. And even as a even as a dad, there have been times where I have like got onto my boys and I've had to and I overreacted or I wasn't just and fair and. I was angry and I had to apologize and ask for forgiveness and you know we all that honestly that brings us closer together um, not that not the mess up but being able to say hey I'm I'm not that prideful and I understand that I messed up and I hurt you and I would like you to forgive me so that's a big deal I mean we gotta we gotta get ourselves out of the way ask for forgiveness and we also have to give our get ourselves out of the way to offer it mm -hmm. so yeah you got anything else to add to that nah you summed it up great okay cool so we might have something else in store i don't i'm not sure yet but it may involve not people that's a hint i'm gonna try but there's no promise but there is a game tucker's gonna play a game it is called face booty awesome it's kind of like make it or break it okay but it's face booty awesome you gotta he's gonna have to decide whether the person lands on their face whether they land on their booty mm -hmm. or whether whatever it is they're trying to do turns out to be awesome that's good that's good so you will see that i promise you that so we will see you in a little bit or tomorrow what Corey? so today is National Bring Your Dog to Work Day. Well, it just so happens that I had to come home to do some work today. Look, I had to do some recording over there for Sunday. And guess who's here? Oh, the little Mags. Oh, babe. Oh, my baby girl. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I got distracted. Maybe that's probably why there's only one day of bringing your dog to work. Just because, look at her. She's so cute. Look at her. She's so cute. Yeah. Well, all right. Enough of my dog, Corey. Not sure how you're going to get your dog to work, but I would love to see Desmond. So, yeah. Bring your dog to work, Corey. Andrew James, I don't know what you're doing at home. I'm in the office at work. Check out my sweet Batman thing. Um, actually, I, I did know that it's National Bring Your Dog to Work Day. Um, I think he's around here somewhere. <whistles> There's my puppy. Hi, Desmond. Hi. <laughs> he's ready to go. Um, I hope that uh, it's okay to have Desmond around here just, just for a little bit for the video, of course. Um, I wonder if any of you have any puppies or dogs. I know you can't, like, bring your dog to work because you're kids, but you could at least hang out with them, treat them special today, maybe even give them a treat or teach them a new trick. Even if they're an old dog, teach them a new trick. All right, Andrew, we got a couple of things that we're going to try out today. We got a couple of uh, videos and maybe a sweet game. So why don't we just jump into the next thing? Um, let's see if Desmond comes again. Come here. Come here. Sit. Pa. Pa. Oh, distracted. Mommy's there. That's the favorite. <laughs> it's absolute favorite. All right, Corona Kitchen, see you later. Bye. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 10. As the early church grew, Peter traveled from town to town telling people the great news about Jesus and how he healed sick people. Now in Jaffa, he raised a dead woman back to life through the power of God's spirit. Tabitha, get up. Many people in Joppa became believers. So Peter stayed there with a man named Simon, a leather worker who lived right beside the sea. 
Peter often went up to the roof to pray. Ah, this is the life. Thank you, Lord, for all these fellow Jews believing in Jesus. But God's plan was bigger than Peter imagined. About 40 miles north, a Roman army commander named Cornelius was praying too. Lord, thank you for all you've given to me and my family. Though Cornelius was not Jewish, him and his family worshiped God. They freely gave to anyone who needed help. While Cornelius was praying, God sent an angel in a vision. Cornelius, the angel's power and brilliance was so strong, Cornelius fell back in awe. What is it, Lord? Your prayers and gifts to poor people are like an offering to God. So he has remembered you. Now send men to Joppa. Have them bring back a man named Peter. He is staying with Simon by the sea. Yes, Lord. The angel vanished. Then Cornelius leapt from his feet. He called on two of his servants and a trusted soldier and told them everything. Leave at once for Joppa. Sir, yes, sir. The trio left around three o'clock, marching at top speed. Around noon the next day, they neared Joppa. At Simon's home, Peter had climbed up the roof to pray. Lord, you've done amazing things here in Joppa. What's next? Mm. <laughs> lunch is next, I guess. While lunch was being prepared, Peter continued to pray, and God sent him a vision, but it wasn't an angel. What is happening? It appeared to Peter that something like a large sheet was dropping from heaven. It contained a zoo of animals, pigs and camels, rabbits and birds and reptiles. Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. Peter stared in shock. The Jews were forbidden to eat the meats of these animals, which were called unclean. No, Lord, I will not. I have never eaten anything that is not pure and clean. Do not say anything is not pure that God has made clean. Two more times, the same thing happened. Then the sheep was taken back up to heaven. Peter blinked and looked around. What does it all mean? At that very moment, the man sent by Cornelius arrived at Simon's front door. Is there a Peter staying here? Up on the roof, God's spirit spoke to Peter. Three men are looking for you. Get up and go downstairs. Don't let anything keep you from going with them. I have sent them. Still, overwhelmed by his vision, Peter hurried down the steps, ran out the front door where he found the men. I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? Sir, we have come from Cornelius, the Roman commander. He's a good man who worships God. The angel told him to invite you to his house so Cornelius can hear what you have to say. Go to his house? Just as it was forbidden for Jews to eat certain foods, it was also forbidden for Jews to enter the home of non-Jews. Oh! In that moment, Peter understood his vision. God was making a new rule about what was clean. The story of Jesus was not just for Jewish people, but for everyone. Please, come in. We'll leave first thing in the morning. The next day, Peter and the three men set out, along with some of the believers from Joppa. The following day, they arrived at Caesarea. This is the home of Commander Cornelius, sir. Thank you. Peter must have paused for a moment before he entered the house. Though God had told him to come, he had never entered the house of a non-Jewish person. Here goes. At the home, Cornelius had gathered all his relatives and friends to listen to Peter. Greetings, Peter. We are honored you've come. The commander lowered himself before Peter, showing a sign of deep respect. Stand up. I am only a man myself. As Cornelius stood, Peter surveyed the room before him and took a deep breath. You know that it is against our law for a Jew to enter the home of someone who isn't a Jew, but, but God has shown me that I should not say anyone is not pure and clean. May I ask why you sent for me? 
Cornelius had explained everything the angel had told him. And Peter shared how God sent Jesus here to share God's love. How Jesus taught and healed people through God's power. Then he would be killed. But then God would raise him back to life again. We ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people. All who believe in Jesus have their sins forgiven through his name. Amen. Praise Jesus. Glory to God. Before Peter could finish speaking, God sent his Holy Spirit down to be with Cornelius and his family and friends. The Jewish believers who came with Peter, they stared in amazement. But they're not Jews. Surely no one can keep these people from being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. Peter baptized Cornelius and his friends and family in the name of Jesus. He stayed with them for several days, overjoyed by the new perspective God had given. Hey, what's up, Chronication? So Andrew sent me this game that I'm going to play with you, with you guys called Face Booty Awesome. So that's an interesting title. Let's uh, let's see what this one tell. From these, okay. So just basically seeing if they land on their face. Oh, I want to go. It's going to be awesome. So it's either face, they land on their face, their booty, or oh, or if they do something awesome. Okay, so it's definitely okay. Ooh. That doesn't look promising. I'm gonna say face. Really? That's more back than anything. Oh, he pulled up the jeans. He's gonna do something cool. Oh, I think he's gonna nail it. I think it's I think it's gonna be perfect. I think it's gonna be awesome. Oh! <laughs> oh, the hard hat did not help on that one. Okay, so we got a ballerina. Uh, oh, she's gonna do something cool. I just know she is. She's probably gonna like do a flip or something. Oh, she's not that good of a ballerina. I am not doing good at this game today, guys. Uh, I'm gonna say face. I think his feet are gonna get caught in the swing. Okay, that was impressive. Okay, we got a snowboarder. I think it's gonna hit, he's got to get hit in the face with something like a branch or something he just doesn't see. <laughs> oh, this guy's gonna do something cool. It's too cool of a video for him not to do something awesome. That was sick. Okay, oh, he's skateboarding on his. He's got to fall on his booty. It's it's it's. He's got to fall. Goodness. Oh, this little kid gets hit in the face. I just know it. He hits himself in the face. I just know it. Ready? Three, two, one. Bam. Oh, called it. Oh, the nose went inside. Oh, he's crying. Called it. Another skateboarder on the hands. I think he's going to do something awesome this time. That was impressive. So I didn't do very well at this game, but hopefully you guys uh, did a lot better. But guys, thank you for playing this game with me.